Absolutely. Now let's move on to Kara real quick. Kara's trained with, you know, a, a mentor under, you know, a, a, a man of Stewart, Cronk Boxing Gym. Detroit has some of the best boxing in the world, bar none, hands down. You know, she's trained with Klitschko. She's trained with Klitschko. She's trained, been to camps with a lot of top world champion boxers. Um, so it's arguably to say Detroit has some of the best boxing in the world. Would, would you agree with that? Oh, I totally agree with yes. that. Yes. Okay. Is, it, it, and, and obviously, there's a, a million fucking stud wrestlers all over the place, uh, you know, sure. all around the area. So with that being it's said. America's martial art. So with that being said. If you have top, and as far as an MMA coach, I've already st- I stated for the record, dude. Uh, um, the true coach takes a guy from the beginning all the way to the, the Super Bowl, which is you know obviously the UFC. So you, right. as far as an MMA coach, myself, as far as an MMA coach, um, you know we're top notch. A lot of guys that do get accolades haven't done that. So with that being said, if you have the coaching base to give you your your technique and you have the best coaches in the world, why do you need to go somewhere else for instruction? Now, I understand the need when it's time for a fight time to go to a camp to get work. But consistently technique, and I understand training with better people helps get you better. I do understand that. But what I'm saying is this. What I've done with my career is this. I've stayed here and got my technique here in Michigan. I didn't run off to fucking California. I didn't run off... Fuck you, Harper. You left us. Anyway, um, I didn't run off to California and, and, and run off to the lights. And, oh, it's greater. It's a bigger pasture over here. The grass is greener on this side. I stayed here. I wanted to put Michigan in me on the map. Fuck Albuquerque. Let's make Detroit a hub for MMA. If everyone, right. all these athletes take off and go somewhere, we're left with nothing on the map. We should be a mecca because we have the talent, we have the resources, we have the. I just named there's a, there's there's four four top you know, level coaches in the world. So with that being said, why run off somewhere else? You can go to camp. You can go you can go to a Greg Jackson's and uh, you know Extreme Couture and, and and train with top level guys. And you guys can kick the fuck out of each other for three weeks and beat the shit out of each other, and get in shape. But then come on back home and get back to your technique right. and and and. and you have guys here that are tough. You know, if we just kept the nucleus like we had, say, Mash Jim. Can you imagine what, what kind of stockpile team? Because think about what these guys. Ben is good, but Ben's not UFC level. Had Ben, we all stayed together under the same roof. You know, Métis, right. me, right. you, Kara, told, you know, Darren, Miles, fucking you know, Harper. The, 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 the core group of guys, we have an extraordinary amount of talent under one roof. You know, so like, you know guy, how much better the guys that want to keep up underneath of those guys would have been Jason Fisher. Wow. Oh, wow. Fish, he'd be, he'd be okay. three times the fighter he was now. You know what I mean? So that I'm, I'm just saying. But that's the thing, you know, though. I said, well, there's never going to be guys what have become by having those guys to use as a target to get better. They get close to your phone again, Don. That's the that, that, that you, you guys are hearing in my voice, you know, because we had everything set up at one time. The outside influences screwed it up, you know. And and so my, point, what, my point being, Don, is this. That's that's weak, dude. You can go get in shape and get work when it's fight time. Put, go, go, go to a three-week camp. But come on back home. You got the top-level world, top-level coaches to work with to get you better. So there's no reason for you to run off to fucking California or Vegas or this team or that team. And honestly, I'm going to throw another name in the mix from those days too. Justin James. uh, Exactly. And I'll say something about Justin James. I'll say something about Justin James. Justin James, when he left and went out for extreme couture about three, four months later, he called me on the phone. He's like, Don, I just want to tell you, man, I really appreciate everything you taught me. I never really knew what I had at the time until I came out here. And, man, I just want to tell you, you were absolutely right everything you ever taught. It was the best phone call I'd ever gotten from from a student, you know, a former student. And, you know, to this day, man, you know, I still got a lot of love for Justin James, just on that phone call alone, you know, because he He's made me you. know, you know, helped to make me, reinforce me that I was doing the right things. You know what I mean? But, unfortunately, well, like, you know, we just don't get the props that we're due. Well, the problem is this too, man. 
what these guys don't realize is this. When you go to a big gym like that, where you have bona fide superstars, you are not a fucking priority. The the gym is based around that superstar, and you are thrown as a fucking sparring dummy. So you think it's all great because you got a chance to spar with fucking Anderson Silva when all you are is a fucking punch dummy. Yeah, I got my fucking brains beat out by all these UFC guys, but nobody is teaching me quality <laughs> technique. No one cares. Like, the, the, let me just explain this. With coaching, there has to be a mental bond between you and that fighter. You are a glorified cheerleader somewhat. You have to find a way to mentally raise the bar for your, your, your student to, 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 to pull through in fights. A lot of it's mental. So there has to be some kind of bond and connection. It's not to say that... Nobody knows all of them recall. Um, Exactly. So say Jerry Rice in Montana, okay? There's chemistry. They bond. They gel. They're one. It's not to say that Dan Marino ain't a good fucking quarterback. He's not one of the best quarterbacks ever to do it and put him with Jerry Rice. The chemistry might not be there. You know what I'm saying? So what what I'm saying is very important that, that that continuity between a fighter and a coach is there. So when you go to a bigger gym, you're another number you're just a body to help the guy who's paying the bills in the fucking gym for to keep the lights on. Because it ain't your fucking paycheck. It ain't your fucking 5-5 five and five or 10-10 ten and ten entry-level UFC fighter or if you're a fucking King of Cage fighter or an entry-level Bellator guy making a couple grand a fucking fight. 3-3, three and 2-2. Three, two and two. They don't give a fuck about you. You're nobody. They focus oh, on the right? stars. And a lot of these guys get caught up in the fucking hype, run out there, and then, oh, I'm doing great, man. I spar with so-and-so. And I've seen oftentimes, and I'll be honest with you, I told Justin James, you looked worse, your hands looked worse when you went out to fucking uh, uh, um, Extreme Couture and you came back and fought. You look worse. And that's the truth. But look, I, I give him some props, folks. He's been looking pretty good lately. Hey, Don. Yeah, I don't you know. talk close to the phone again? I'm sorry. I said, I'll give him some props, though. He has been looking better lately, though. And back to Justin. I want to squeeze his fucking testicles. He calls me. He's got Vinny. He's, he's got Vinny Magalayas in his fucking in his fucking gym. And I'm like, dude, run, get your legs conditioned. Your legs were weak. They're, they were coming out from underneath you. Why do you have Vinny in your fucking gym, and you're not putting out a fucking gee with this guy, going to his gee classes? What the fuck is wrong with you? So you know, he's like, hey man, you're right. He started running, got his legs uh, conditioned, and he started going to gee class. And he's like, hey, man, it helped out a lot. Thanks for the advice, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he listened, though, you know, so. Right. And, and, he has, right. and he has improved. So, you know, I'm just saying all this to say that, you know, a lot of guys, they they don't have to run off. The point is they don't have to run off. We have everything you need here. No, and you know what? The more stars we blossom here, the more we can grow as a sport, I mean, as, as a state, and have those guys from other areas come to our home, make this the place to be, for Michigan and MMA to get better. That's it really is. It, it really is. And, and uh, you know, it, that was a great point bringing up Kron. They're the one of the best in the nation. I mean, you're, you're not going to find world. Even, maybe if you world. Were, yeah. It, it, well, certainly. I mean, but I'm, if you're an American guy wanting to learn how to box. Um, so, like, uh, if you if you lived in a different area, man, maybe there's somewhere in California or someplace in New York you could go because that's where you live. But, but if you live in the Midwest – you go to Kronk, you're going to learn how no, to no, no, no. and they're going to, you know, right? One of my closest friends, Pierre Karam, he moved here from fucking Australia to train with Kronk. Yes. World I mean, they come from all over the world, man. Not just local or Midwest. No. They fought from the other side of the fucking earth to train at and that actually, gym. We have a bunch of listeners in Belgium and the Netherlands, so I want to say what up to all you guys, and I hope you're coming from the coffee shop, too. Uh, it's early morning there, but they tune in quite frequently. They got a good portion of people in Belgium and uh, and uh, a lot of Dutch listeners too. Well, fly Big Don and I out for a seminar. Fly that Big Don and I out for a seminar. As I say, yeah. half Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt will travel. Fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'll get that going as long as you keep close to your damn phone here. You sound like you're at the end of a tunnel. Well, like I'm talking down a. Oh, uh, damn it. I don't have any reception in my house. I'm sorry. 
Oh, is that better? You're better now. Yeah, big time. Okay. Uh, it sounds like you're right. in a tin can, one of them fort phones. So what I'm saying is <laughs> it's not about delivering somebody to the next level where you're at. Like maybe let's say somebody up north was talking. Well, I'm like Vance learned from you guys and was in that core group. He was one of those people that went to 8 Mile and was in James's gym. And, you know, he if he sees talent, he tells him to go see you guys. Um, and so, you know, you do have some resources finally in other parts of the state, but we do have the capabilities here and, and the, the ability to build that. It's not about passing somebody on. It's not about saying, all right, well, fella, you're ready to move to, to New Mexico. And here's the deal. All these motherfuckers fighting out of Albuquerque ain't from Albuquerque, dude. They ain't from there. They moved there to, to join up, like you said, with this fad gym, with this guy that recruited or somehow, you know, got enough done to, to bring in and get supported by the UFC to, to train a bunch of what they consider their best. But then you've got guys, you know, like the uh, some of the earlier well, – well, Duke Rufus, he's done pretty well for himself finally, you know, and some of the other guys – I'm trying to remember the fucker's name. We've had him on the show, too. Man. Monty Cox, you know, some of these guys that nobody's heard of that are from that same group, you know, they're 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 out there. And, and, and I'd much like Militich. All his guys were from Iowa and the Midwest. And uh, Greg Nelson, who had a decent little gym up there in Minnesota for a while, he his people were from Minnesota. I mean, that's really how it should work. And with the resources we have in the Detroit area alone – and, and with some of the offshoots of people that came up with you guys that just simply, like you said, you know, sometimes people have to move. They get a chick pregnant or they get a job somewhere or whatever it is. But then again, somehow they still come back to it. You know, pretty soon there will be more outposts in, let's say, Grand Rapids or places that you guys could uh, bring in talent from. So I'm all for that. And I think that's not necessarily a revolutionary concept, but something that really does need to be revisited. I mean, and Don, you guys are really doing that with, with Fuse. I mean, the name itself kind of alludes to the, the whole process anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's the representation of fusing the martial arts that I mentioned earlier, boxing, kickboxing, judo, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, all together. So that was the, the thought behind that, you know. And the name Fusion has, you know, it's overplayed, you know, so... I shortened it to Fuse, and that was kind of, you know, what spawned the name of that. You know, because, uh, you know, each one of those martial arts that I mentioned, you know, I'm a fan of personally, and, and I train in, you know, and, and follow and, and do my due, due diligence and, you know, have good basics at least in all those martial arts. You know, I was a pretty good wrestler in high school. I have a, I'm a fair boxer. I'm, I've got good judo. I have good jiu-jitsu. I have good Muay Thai. You know what I mean? So... Those are the martial arts that, that I really look to a lot. You know, I think those are the, the ones that are, you know, relevant to mixed martial arts. You know, not to well, not good. play any other martial art. You know, I played around with a little bit of stick fighting. That kind of stuff is fun and it's good to know. But, you know, for one-on-one hand-to-hand combat, those martial arts that I mentioned, that's, you know, that's the ticket right there, you know. No, I agree 100%. I'm sorry, yeah, this, this is great. show, we, we, we just had to, uh, you know, get some shit off of our chest, and uh, I know it seems like a bit, bit session, but this is pent up years of, of aggression and disrespect and, you know, just mockery, and it just, it's just, it's horrible, man, and, 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 and you know what, I, I used to just say, fuck it, I don't really care, but now that I, but you know, you've given me an opportunity to project my voice and be heard in the MMA world, you know, it's like, you know what, man, I love something, you should fight for it, and you should not let somebody just take it from you and ruin and knock down the house that you helped build. No, out. never. So, And when I got I'm here, gonna, guys, I, that's why I look to you. Because you paved the cobbles, you put the cobblestones down on the road that I walk on to feed my family, fellas, and I thank you for that. And you need this. Uh, I, the, the, all these people that I have to announce every weekend that don't know what the fuck they're doing need this. And they need to have the chance to learn that there's a chance, there's a place they can go if they really want to do this. But you might not, you might figure out it ain't for you. Don't be scared. Go ahead, James. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're good. I, I'm just saying that uh, it's it's. 
I, I just had a sour – MMA, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship. You know, like we have a shot on last week. You know, hey, you know what? you got to reinvent it. you got to – you know, there's so many things that can give you a sour taste in your mouth for the sport, whether it be fighters fucking you over or you know, this at the other to all types of different things. Or, uh, the, or the promoters as a fighter, yes. or, you know, yeah. athletic commissions, poor Nick Diaz, or, yeah, Nick, <laughs> you know. There's a lot of things in yeah, the world in general that try to keep you down, you know. And, you know, we're fighters, man, and we're fighting, you know, to make a better life for, you know. For me, personally, I owe everything in my life, literally everything in my life to martial arts, to fighting, to martial arts, you know, from my from my fiancé to my job to everything I owe to martial arts, you know. So I take it very, very, very seriously. When I don't see people taking it seriously, it burns my ass. You know, and it's like, yeah, it, it just burns my ass, you know, like, it hurts my spirit, you know. Yeah, it's like, well, you, you can reclaim that. That's yours, and it's and it's it's there to be shared. You've done so well with that. Everybody you shared your spirit with has had success, and has, and, and because when you recognize the talent. You're willing to put in that work. You're willing to let somebody crash out if they need to or go pick them up or, you know, maybe not charge them this week because they didn't have the money or give them a ride to the event and, and deal with them maybe not kicking down any cash from the winnings or whatever it might be, just all in the interest of building them up to be the best competitor they can. And I, I think your, that the more your, that that happens, the, the better this becomes. And I think we're really close to building something. I, I mean, I disagree, of, but you're – Go ahead. But I, I completely disagree with what, I completely disagree with what you're saying. Don, okay. trust me when I tell you this. Don and I have done more, more than enough of our fucking charity work. Believe me when I tell you that. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the percentages and odds. And then Joe Bataille, I know you're fucking listening. How many broke dick user motherfuckers had money to go to the fucking bar that weekend and get fucking drunk, but couldn't pay a fucking twenty dollar fucking monthly due that you charged them? You know. Well, that just ain't I right. Well, that, that's what and I'm saying. And he had to close his gym. And he had to close his gym. You know? And he's happy to do it now because he just gets to train without the stress. You know? And that's the whole thing I was saying earlier, you know? If it wasn't for the group of guys that I have and the kids that I teach, you know, I'll, I'll close the school. It's not worth it. Monetarily, it's not worth it. You know? I'm it's putting my nor, own money back anxiety. into this place. Nor yeah, the anxiety in right. and, 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 and feeling you. When you think someone's your friend, you treat them like family, you know, and, and they wind up stabbing you in the fucking back when there's no loyalty reciprocated. My thing is this. When, someone, when these motherfuckers say to me, hey, you know what? I had to do what was best for me. Well, let me ask you a question, motherfucker. Was it best for me to train you for free for fucking 10 years or five years, take time away from my family, and fly out the fucking corner you with certain places, pay for your tape, your gauze, get your jobs, let you sleep on my fucking couch. Was it my best interest to do that? So if I would no. have the same attitude as you, if I had the same attitude as you, you wouldn't be where the fuck you're at. Because guess what? Really, nobody else going through anybody else is really making it to a higher level, other than through Don or I. I'm not saying there hasn't been an exception. Uh, Kevin Lee might be the exception, you know. But other than that, I mean, there hasn't been anyone. So. You know, the, the point being is when people, these guys, I'm, not, I'm saying this is the majority, vast majority of MMA fighters, they are fucking program users and have this fucked up notion of some type of self-entitlement, which makes me fucking sick to my stomach, which goes back to his time. I'm going to fucking return pop bottles. I'm going to fucking figure something out. There can't be eight years of you being fucking broke. Okay, I get it. You're going through a hard time. Yeah, I'll be more than happy to help you out. But it can't be too two years, three years, four years, you're just that guy who never has his fucking shit together. And if you want if you want to show true. appreciation, you know what? If you want to show some appreciation, you know what? Go clean the fucking gym, dude. Go make sure you mop the mat. Clean the fucking toilets. Do something. Bring in students for them. So they'll be like, well, hey, listen, I'm going to go and recruit for your gym. I'll, I know that this, the lights cost money. I know that your time costs money. You've paid dues in the sport. Let me go recruit five students to your gym to, to offset my, me being here. Do something like that if you're fucking broke. But to get a fucking free ride and have everybody take care of you, because then it comes, becomes expected at that point, and that's where the self-entitlement comes from. And it's like when people pay for your services, 
and it took me a long time to really realize this, because I had a gym. I've had gyms my whole fucking life, and after that fucking mass gym fiasco, I was just like, man, fuck it. I don't want the headache. I want to deal with the bullshit. I'm done managing fucking fighters. I'm done with fucking gyms. I want to go and teach, leave, go home, get my fucking check. I don't give a fuck anymore. I told Joe Batai before he even, he opened that fucking gym, dude, fuck the gym. It's a fucking nightmare. I'm going to start managing fighters. Dude, it ain't worth it. Fuck it. Leave him alone. Guess what? He pretty much basically quit managing fighters, and he pretty much he quit the fucking gym. Now, granted, he had to experience that for his own, his own, you know, being, but everything I told him, you know, he caught, he caught up to where I, what I've already been through and saw it for himself. And I'm not, I'm not saying there's not some guy out there that will appreciate you doing something like that for him, but it can't be always on a consistent basis. You have to want to do it for yourself. There's no reason a guy can't go hustle up and get five students for Don's gym if he wants to free, expects a free membership. There has to be some kind of barter and trade in that process to show your appreciation for what's going on here. Well, and to be fair, fair to compensate. You know, as guys listening, the ones that I have, are awesome. They teach classes. They, they, you know, they could do a little better job cleaning guys. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, they do, tell, they do teach classes, and you know, they help out around the gym and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, it's not consistent across the board. You know, there's a lot of them that do, and there's a lot of them that don't. There's a lot of them don't contribute at all. You know, and you know, it's just tough. Man, it's a tough way to. So do you have to you know, out, can people what, sometimes? You have to just tell people, look, man, this ain't for you. Here's and my I can't problem. Do this. Here's my problem. I'm a bleeding freaking heart, man. I want to help these <laughs> guys and make a better life for them. And the bad thing is, they don't want to do it for themselves, you know. And the ones that do are the ones that are successful. Those are the ones that you're seeing freaking winning the championship belts, things like that, you know. So Josh Buck- Bruckner, keep doing what you're doing, kid. If you're listening, you know, yeah. there's a few of them that are really putting it out there. George Simos, you know, there's a couple kids out there that are really doing it. Ben Lagman, even though he's not fighting no more, but, you know, that kid's in there teaching, freaking hustling, trying to make things happen for this gym. And, I, you know, another part of my thing is, you know, I want to keep this gym open for him, you know. But, man, these guys got to freaking step up, you know. Well, I think that that maybe – so what you're seeing here is, like, these are attributes that maybe make somebody uncoachable almost because – if you can't put all of it together, and it's a lot to put together. That's why world champions are unique. You know, that's why somebody that makes it to the top of this profession. I bet you every world champion, including Conor McGregor, regardless of how he acts and what it looks like on TV, is a humble motherfucker that knows what it takes to pay their dues. I mean, I can't name one that I, that I can think of offhand anyway, in the UFC at least. All those world champions – know what it takes and they've respected people and they've got homeboys that have been there since they started and they've got teams that are trusted members and, and managers that have been there when they were sleeping in a school bus or on somebody's couch or some shit, right? I mean, at this point in time, as far as we, the way we look at the UFC, that's what makes the cream rise to the top. So what you're talking about here, I want to tell you guys, to, I want to try to help you not be quite so jaded. And I know it's hard to do and I know I'm new. But you guys are sounding like judges on the bench that just keep seeing fucked up child molesters come in front of you on the podium all the time, and you start thinking everybody sucks. Well, we're dealing with regular humanity here. So there's a regular percentage of humanity already that just don't give a fuck. They'll just step on anyone to get wherever they got because that's the example they've been given by people that are successful. It says, ho, 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 I've got my Mercedes because I stepped on this guy and I – ransack this motherfucker and I snitched on this guy and blah, blah, blah. And they start thinking that's the way to go. Now you as a coach, somebody really lays themselves bare and lets you, them, you teach them and lets these martial arts really take hold in them. When they get that chance to go talk to a Métis as somebody that really lives and breathes one art. And then they come back to you and you say, see what I mean? And then they start learning who they are and building themselves, it should be a natural progression for them to want to compensate and put in. And I think that's where you do really separate not just the skilled from the unskilled because you could be the best motherfucker and have all the gas tank in the world and be awesome, but if you're a fucking dickhead that's uncoachable, you're not going to get very far. Mm. Eventually you're going to get exposed, right? 
no, actually, speaking of dickheads that are un- uncoachable, David Evans just walked in. So, uh, um, did you go see Métis today at noon like you were supposed to? I did not. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, anyway. Thanks, Lee. No problem. <laughs> I was wrapping Listen. that up just because I was getting wordy, but go ahead. No, the good the good thing is this. David, we talked about you earlier on the show. We talked shit about you behind your back, but we also complimented you at the same time. You got the most fucking potential out of anybody that came across our, 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 our gym in a long time. And you could be fucking a superstar if you were just coachable. That's and I invited dominant. you to my gym. But, I don't know how many times to come train. Open door policy. Big you dominant. never come see me. And you lived around the corner from him. Why didn't you fucking do it? You're on the air. Answer up. Well, they have a, a six-inch penis policy, and I'm 5.4, so I was unable to... Don is white. He doesn't have a six-inch dick. <laughs> now what's the experience? Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, and this is a kid that knows what he's got and still looks at the disrespect. Yep. You so, know? Uh, <laughs> so this guy went in and, and, and beat arguably, I mean, people who are uh, out there talking about Walter Waits, and we have a few coming up now, but uh, in Michigan, Daquan Townsend's name comes into everyone's conversation when they think they know about shit or when they do know about shit. David Evans went in there on, on just sheer guts alone and beat him, James? Yes, absolutely. Was not even in shape for the fucking fight. Five rounds. That's and it went, it went five rounds on heart. Two weeks. I think two weeks I had to train, and I worked every day for that two weeks. I didn't even get a good, solid day of training. I just remember what James taught me. I reviewed the videos that... When I go to his seminars, I just reviewed his videos while I was in the truck driving to the next destination. And if you can see, I sort of I was getting a understanding of mixed martial arts and wrestling while I was fighting with Daquan. Like uh, I'm aware of takedowns and I know how wrestling go. It's now in my blood that I'm around James, and I just was like, well, what would James do in this in this particular predicament? And, you listen know, to his coach. Know. Listen to his coach. That's what James would do. Yeah. <laughs> it is definitely a lot more to come I, I I really do thank you guys For all the help that y'all have Given me and providing me all the insight Over these years I really do appreciate hey, that We're busting your balls because we give a fuck mm-hmm. no, don't take exactly. it Exactly It's because we can't, it's cause in, we all can't. Seriousness, in all seriousness Dave I've had this talk with you I don't know how many times You know the sky is truly the limit for you And you're still young Man, take advantage of the offer you've been given. I have a room full of guys your size. Man, I mean, you're missing out, bro. You're missing out. You know, and you're limiting yourself and what your potential is, man. You can go as far as you wanted to in this sport. It just depends on how much you want to put into it, man. And just sheer athleticism and natural talent alone is not enough, man. It's not. You got to be coached, man, and you got to get with the guys that can help make you better. You know, even better than you already are, which is pretty freaking amazing considering the amount of time you actually put in the gym. You know, and that's what a lot he, of he love. Puts, but, he puts time into the know. gym just with the wrong people. If I say, Dave, don't work with this guy in the gym, that's the first motherfucker he runs to. Or, David, I don't want you going to that gym, I want you to go to this gym. He'll go to the other gym I told him not to go to. <laughs> he does work hard. It is, he just, he'll, he'll of learn, being, though. Instead of being inconvenienced, He'll do what's ever most convenient for him, thinking that he'll just make that he he can get by with getting a little bit less better jujitsu or something from somebody else, as opposed to going to you know a top notch program. You know what I mean? But anyway, well, you uh, know, I can only speak from personal experience and say that if I only did what was convenient for me, I would have never gotten. I probably wouldn't even be alive at this point, but I wouldn't have gotten as far as I've gotten in life if I just did what was convenient. You know what I mean? Follow what I'm saying? So imagine what the what your potential is, you know? Yeah, thank you, sir. And Daquan's a cerebral fighter. He's the kind of guy that approaches contests with – I've interviewed him before a lot of his fights, man. And, you know, it, it's it's an intriguing 
he's got an interesting approach. And uh, so for you to go in and trump that just on two weeks and not doing a whole lot of shit, dude, holy fuck, I hope you do uh, start doing it all the time. And uh, we have a caller, fellas. I'm going to let him go on ahead and uh, pose a question. He wanted to say, he wanted to bitch at you guys. So uh, we have a caller on the line from the Detroit area, James and Don awesome. and David the Demon. What's up, guys? It's Joe. <laughs> Hi, what's up, Joe? Oh, Joe Battaglia. I've been listening for the last freaking hour and a half. I got on the show late, but I was listening to your rant. I thought it was, I thought it was funny. Just clearing up one thing: I sold the gym, not closed it. <laughs> that's, that's that's one. But I, you know, the only other thing is, I and mean, this has been a rant fest for a, you know an hour and a half. There is some other good quality coaches out there. They may not just be on your level. You know what I mean? That's the uh, well, that's the difference. I mean, me, myself, I'm a fifth-degree black belt, and I go to James and Don when I want work. You know what I mean? So it's the, it's the pride that some of these guys have that stops them. It isn't their ability. You know what I mean? They need to be able to go see. If, if, if you need help in an area, there's always somebody better. You know what I mean? So... For me, you know, I train at Warrior Way mostly because it's closer to me, but I get stuck in situations all the time, and Don's the first person I go to. Hey, man, I got stuck in this situation. What the hell do I do to fix it? And he usually has the right answer. And the same thing with James. You know, a lot of, you know, James is really qualified with the leg locks a ton, and there's been plenty of situations, especially last year before the Worlds, because I didn't know purple belts didn't do leg locks. I said, hey, man, I'm having problems with this. And James like, all right, well, let's work on it. And, you know, 20 minutes, it's, I don't know what, what the pride is with these people that they can't, you know, just jump in there and say, hey, I, I need some help on something. Because not everybody, you know, nobody's perfect. There's always something to learn, you know what I mean? I just think the MMA produces way too much ego. There is way too many guys out there that can't say, hey, I need help in something because they don't want to give that person the credit, you know what I mean? But they've earned well, that's it. The thing. You know what I that's mean? the thing, though, Joe. Like, you know, where Don and I have achieved uh, success. I'll call Don up and be like, dude, well, how the, or if I'm in class, Don, this motherfucker keeps doing this to me. What the fuck do I do? You know what I'm saying? I, there's nothing wrong. Right. You can't know everything. You have to have humility to grow as a martial artist. And even as a man, fuck the martial arts. You don't know every fucking thing. You know, you have life right. coaches. But that's what parents are. Parents are life coaches because they've experienced more things than you in life. You reach out to those who know more about something than you. Or even if they don't, they might know something that you don't know. So you can go ahead and, 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 and I reach out and ask for help all the time. Yeah, you, and that helps me grow. That's important, right? Yeah. No, I, yeah, mean, yeah, I, I appreciate you, Joe. That. Like, I appreciate right. you know you guys getting out here and you know kind of making me feel better. I'm starting to feel like we're going on a rant here. You know what I mean? But <laughs> you know, you're another guy too that you know didn't get the credit you deserved either. You know, even I apologize too. You know, I should have given you more credit on Facebook this weekend. You know, for the fights, no, but you know, Joe, you know, he's one of those guys that gives back, you know, so much. You know, and he's been a student and a friend, and, you know what I mean. And and, and that you guys like you, Joe, we appreciate. You know, and I know Brandon, and Harvey, and Angelo from Warrior Way say the same thing. You know, we appreciate students like you that that support us and and, and give us the our just due and you know things like that. Man, it's just it's frustrating. I mean, I'm at the same point you were. You know, when you when you sold the gym, you know, I'm just like, I'm so frustrated that I'm up to give it up, you know, because I can't, I don't want to, I want to teach martial arts for a living, you know, and make enough money to support my family. And I think that I put the work in and, you know, I've had the proven results and I don't understand, man. You know, I just don't get it, you know. No, it's well, tough. Much, I mean, it's. How much of this, Joe, uh, and this is good to have you in here because, you know, you've done the promotional angle, and now you're strictly pro- mainly promoting professionals and putting a few amateur fights together here and there, but with professionals, it's much different. But when we look at amateur promotion, and it, it's pretty unique here in Michigan, uh, to say the least. People that compete, now, obviously, they're not all going to your gyms. Uh, there are other places, and a lot of them, you know, can't aren't capable of doing a whole lot. Um, however, they're still doing it, and it's going on. So these guys are being pushed to sell tickets, to, to create uh, a fan base, to, to do things. A lot of them make shirts and sell them. A lot of guys do this and do that. Um, and I see a lot of people doing that 
and they actually sell tickets too that aren't really training, man. And I'll be there. Well, and it gets exposed to my eye, and I'm untrained as a. Uh, I'm untrained uh, physically, but I watch a lot of shit, you know. And it's like, to my eye, I, I see as soon as the fight starts, man, this motherfucker doesn't know anything. Why the fuck are all these people here supporting the shit out of him? How the fuck does this work? Now, that's where your ego comes from, doesn't it? Well, it, it I think it goes to the coach because for me, you know, that we since we do promote fights, and even before we promoted fights, the bottom line is the fighter has to have value. And the value comes from his skill meaning his coaching, and his marketability. Because you, there's plenty of guys that are badasses, I guarantee, that could be in the UFC, but there's no marketing behind him. Maybe he's 38 years old and never been there, even though he's a badass and probably could be fighting. They're not going to call him because how much money can they make on a 38-year-old? They're only ha- going to have the guy for a couple, of three years, and it's not worth them spending their money on that guy to get him in the promotion, whether he's good or bad. So you have to teach these amateurs that on the lowest level is the skill set, number one, and then how can you market yourself, either through Facebook or whatever it may be. But as far as an, promote, pro promotion is different than amateur. Yeah, I mean, pro Talking promotion me is different James. than amateur. Is amateur, it doesn't really matter what promotion. As long as the promotion has insurance, the coach's responsibility is to find the toughest fighter. So if there's a tough fighter that fights for some show in in Grand Rapids, guess what? It's time to make a road trip if you have that elite athlete that's already beat everybody else up. It's not getting better unless he fights the toughest guy. I mean, that's the bottom line. In amateur, it doesn't matter if you win or lose because you're learning. Now, that completely changes when they turn pro. You have to bring a guy along um, because money is affected. And when money, you know, when money's affected, it, it matters. But you see a lot of amateur gyms, and, and this just goes to show their mindset, is these MMA gyms, they'll, you'll see on Facebook, we went 17-2 and two this weekend. Well, if you went 17-2, and two, you're either the best coach in the world or you're not getting your guys the right fights. Because the bottom line is it doesn't matter how many championships you have on the wall, it's how many guys you can pass up the line to the biggest promotions and bet, beat the best guys. It doesn't matter if they beat some guy that has 35 fights if he's, you know, only got two wins. You know what I mean? Well, it's, 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 so it's, it's, to, to add on to what you just said about the, the, the local gym going 17-2, and two, this is where these fighters get confused and say, oh, my gym's the shit. No, motherfucker. You had fucking 18 fucking ridiculous athletes or guys that are just athletic as hell, and they don't have fucking skill, but because they're such great fucking athletes or they fought such a – they're not a great athlete, they fought a complete shit bag. It was worse, worse shit bag than they were. They get some kind of confidence thinking that the coach was the one who attributed the success to when it was really themselves as being an athlete or just fighting someone who's shittier than them. Right. And it reinforces no, them to keep training with that fucking retard. It, it's 100% true. I mean, we got, we have athletes, you know, that are coming through that we're still trying to fix. I mean, look at Marco. You know, Marco is a badass. He, him and Josh are some of the tough 170 years in the state right now. And how, how much, I know Don is because I'm with him a lot, and when James, when you when we were at the fight club together, we're on Marco's ass all the time because we oh, have so I'm... much work to do with that kid that everyone else in the state, the state thinks he's so great, and he is a great athlete because there's nobody work, works harder than Marco, nobody. I mean, this kid's in the gym two or three times a day, and he's got a full-time job. To, but the bottom line is we're on him so hard because he knows he's capable. I gotta give a shout out real quick, Joe, to Marcus Malding for taking that fight on short notice and giving Marco a pretty decent, you know, effort. Yeah, he did great. I mean, he was ten pounds, you know, overweight, but we don't care. Again, it doesn't. If Marco would have lost that fight, which he really wasn't in any danger of, but if he would have lost, it doesn't matter. We wouldn't have made a single excuse. We wouldn't have made a single excuse, and neither and neither would have he, you know, about weight or anything like that. He would have. He, he lost, I and mean, we would have gone back, and we would have improved on, you know, you know what he needed to work on. You know what I mean? And, and that's so, the beauty behind students like Marco is he goes and sees James. He goes and sees Don. He sees me. You know, him and I train at Warrior Way on Mondays, and then after class we spend another hour upstairs working on his striking. You know what I mean? So it's he does his work. He's still got a long way to go, don't get me wrong, but with the combination that he has and the training partners, is the biggest, you know, that's that's just as big as the coaches. I mean, you, you get with, you know, David, with James and some of James's guys, and then he goes to Kara and does hands, and then you go to Fuse, and there's, you know, in an MMA class, there's six beasts on the mat any given night. 
You know what I mean? So with that kind of training, it's only going to make you better because, you know, you know how it is in the gym. You know, the guy next to you, you don't want that guy to be better than you. You want to be better than him. So that makes you better. It's not that you don't like the guy, but you have to want to be the best guy in the room. Otherwise, you're, you're wasting your time. You know what I mean? I agree. You have to want it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that if you are the best guy in the room, that you're in the right place. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. No, and I that agree. can happen. You know, and that gets exposed. And I think bringing it back, too, to kind of the mixed martial arts and promotion and, and the uh, product that we see. And it's regional, too, uh, regionally based. You know, Michigan spread out, and we have an interesting, uh, like a lot of states do, but Michigan more so than others because of the geographical layout. We have concentrations of the population in in certain areas in the lower parts of the state and up where I live in the Great White North. It's it's few and far between. And, and James was alluding to the up north shows. And again, we're not out here shitting on anybody. So hey, if the shoe fits, try to try to fucking fix it. Polish that motherfucker. Don't why does it gotta be the Great White? Good. Why does it gotta be the Great White North? Because it snows. Why do we, why do we racist? Mm. No, because it snows. Why you, you're racist if you think it's racist? <laughs> you want to get a circular argument with me, James? Hey, the great. Oh, you, you you need to come on down to the Great Black Detroit, motherfucker. How's that sound? It's gray down there. It's not black. It's gray. <laughs> but no, seriously. Uh, when we talk about uh, the product, okay. Now, we've had to sit through. We've worked shows together in different places and, and there's people now see here's the deal though the fans and the product that you guys are putting out and displaying and contributing to whether it's refereeing coaching promoting uh whatever you know all the different aspects that you guys work to make this sport continue to grow and be put on properly when we see um fans stop going to shows if it's not done well people know what they're looking at now i mean we've got enough of example uh going on to where like even in like up north here like if you show up to a fight and you've paid 20 30 40 50 bucks to watch it and you see a bunch of terrible mismatches or people that obviously haven't trained even though it may be mildly entertaining and you you had a good time got drunk did what you did maybe you saw dave the butcher and you get excited as fuck about that but other than that, you're like, man, next time I got 50 bucks, I'm going fucking camping. I'm going down state and checking out one of those shows because I got pissed because it sucked. Now, what we're seeing lately is people are stepping it up. And it started down there with the being more pro organizations, each card being put on. And again, big respect and props to what you did this weekend, Joe. It was a sweet card, dude. And it looked great. Um, with each card being put out by different organizations, the bar gets raised. And we're starting to see that trickle down to the amateur level up north here. We have people caring. Vance puts on a good show. Big John's putting on a good show. Even some of the other organizations are stepping up what they're trying to do as far as matching people up and sending them to the right gyms if they have a fight team and trying to at least do it right. So I think you guys, you know, rant is important. I don't think this is a bitch fest. I think we've really covered some great ground here as we have 20 minutes left inside the Ever Victory right. Virtual Studios on the patinodiet.com hotlines. Uh, who wants to talk next? Well, well I, for I me, I just want to say one thing about the up north. I personally like bringing, you know, the brand new guys up north, like the Vance's show or Christos. You know, if they can find us a fight, even um, Brett's, I haven't had anybody on Brett's card, but, you know, these are guys I know. That's the only reason why I say that is I know them and I trust them. Well, we had uh, George Simos at Spartella's card. Yeah, George did. He fought at Brett's. That's right. So yeah. it's like I like yep. to do that when guys, you know, are starting out because they can kind of get a feel from being out of their hometown. They don't have to worry about the ticket sales because it is out of hometown, and they can focus it on getting their first couple fights out of the way. So I, I enjoy it for that reason. Not that there's not some killers up there, too, because I'm sure there is. You know what I mean? But I'm saying that that's what I like to do. And it's a nice vacation to me, too, to go away for, you know, the night or whatever. So there is definitely value. And I've seen some shows up north that were blowouts, too, man, tons of people, you know. So it, I just think amateur MMA across the board is 
it, MMA in general, you know, pro and amateur, outside this past weekend, the last couple shows actually we've had, but outside of that, it's everything is down. You know, there's just too much of it. So when there's so much, you can always say to yourself, well, I can go next week or I can go next week, and then pretty soon you never go, which that's everything. Right. People are raising the bar, though, and they're getting challenged it's because of your guys' work, so don't stop. I mean, it, it's important uh, for people to hear this. It's important for you guys who, like, again, like I said, and I can only relate this personally. I'm not just sitting here talking about myself, okay? But when I got here, I was fortunate enough. Well, Lagman ref like, the second fight I ever worked. Uh, I started getting to meet people and becoming, you know, finding out who was here first, you know what I mean? Finding out who put these cobblestones down. And, again, like I said, I feed my family from this. This is my job. And I appreciate it. And I want people to know this. I want the product to get good. I know what I'm looking at. And even though I don't tell you, because I'm not going to shit on you when you just tried something out that you got to have guts to do, even though you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm better than anyone either. I'm just like, when I see that, I, I know that there's places people can go. And I'm, you know, I'm glad that I kind of get a green light when I talk to you guys here live and that people can hear this. And no, there are places to go, and you got to put in some time and effort and raise a little money. That's part of life. You want to be a good bowler, you got to buy a motherfucking ball and some shoes. Go ahead. One of the things, though, is like we, as the people that are reputable, so when I say we, I mean the people that are reputable, reputable promoters, reputable coaches, and things like that, need to like understand that like if we attend or work for some of these events that we give our like credit they were giving credibility to these to these crappy shows and the ones that are oversaturating the guys that don't have insurance and um put on these you know crappy shows let's just use a name like i don't know f them up freaking cage fighting as an example sure. or something you know if we these, i had to stop we go to so give that show credibility so like not putting you on black i don't want to take food off your table dave but if you go no, out to these shows, stop. you're getting that credibility. So it's something you should keep in mind, you know what I mean? And we all should keep in mind, not just saying you. but um, I've had to stop quite a know, few, man. Time, if, like, if I see some janky shit, I have to pull it up stakes or raise. Usually all I do is raise my rate and they call somebody else. But, like, uh, there's been places where I go and I'll be like, all right, man, when someone calls me that's new or somebody that I haven't worked for before that may have been doing it for a while, I'm like, all right, listen, Who's your referee? What kind of judges do you use? How serious do you take this? I mean, you have fucking insurance. I mean, do you try to do some blood work if someone requests to? You know, I, I ask this shit. If somebody doesn't have insurance, man, I I don't do it. You know, I work for, like, a group in Muskegon now, and I had to finally I, – I didn't ask him the first couple of times because the dude has decent money and puts on pretty good show, but I asked him finally, and I said, show me your insurance stuff, bro. Let me see what you go through. I posed it differently. Right. You showed it to me. And I was like, all right, thank you, man. I just really care about this. You you got good fights here, and people can get fucked up by stuff. You know, they can get cut you out elbows sometimes when people are working them if they come from a gym that the coaches agree. Well, I've, been, they work with some, been a vi- what? I've been a victim of a show that didn't have insurance. And I have permanent damage that could have been uh, taken care of, but because the show didn't have insurance, I ended up with like $10,000 worth of medical bills and permanent uh, damage to my hand and things like that, you know. So that's something that I take very seriously, you know. That's another thing, too, about MMA and some of the stuff that's going on. I mean, these guys don't understand how dangerous this sport really is, you know, and they need to take it seriously and not, you know, take it lightly. And if you're going to do it, man, you better do it with, uh, you know, the intent to make it all the way to the top, you know. Well, not saying that some of these guys that want to have a fun. See how it goes. Shouldn't do it, but I mean, if you're going to do it, you better do it to the best of your ability because this is a dangerous sport and you can get really hurt. You know. Yes, sir. Well, the thing is, it, to have good insurance is not cheap, and that's why you know you got to know what you're looking at when you're looking at someone's insurance too, Dave. Because yeah. you know, a lot of these guys get general liability insurance, but that doesn't cover the fighters at all. You that's know what I mean? Why. Like you need fighter health insurance to cover the actual fighters. You know what I mean? It's not just about paying the payroll on a pro MMA show. I'd be happy to email you our bill, but our insurance was $6,100 for our show. 
6,100. Yeah, and a lot of these so dumpster sales run between two and 3,000. What's that? A lot of these amateur shows between run between two and four thousand and the pro am I can't remember what they paid. But it's it's well, not then cheap. those guys that said it's between two and three thousand, they're lying to you. Because amateur insurance for twelve fights is eight hundred and sixty bucks. That's really? all it is. It's eight hundred and sixty dollars and it's the exact same price for every single promoter in the state because there's only one company that insures MMA and that's Francis L D. Now everybody's got their own you know, rep that does it, but it all ultimately it all comes from the same place. You know what you I mean? You don't think other it's insurance companies are putting shit together to try to take some money from motherfuckers, though, homie? <laughs> I bet What's that's that? what happened. I bet yeah, that's, uh, maybe their insurance world. agents marking them up. I, I mean, that's yeah, a big markup. Well, I'm you know, telling you I what, like, like they're, you think they're beneath that? <laughs> I mean, that industry in itself is interesting at times. So uh, with that being said, I mean, I've been having to do that, Don and, and Joe, and that, that's a good point. I've had to pull back, and, and sometimes I sit at home on the weekend if I you know, can't work somewhere that someone's at least trying to start putting it together, get people covered, make sure that they at least have a good referee that's going to prevent those extra chances for injury. I mean, you got someone that just stands there and doesn't break the fight up, or you got somebody that breaks it up too soon, or they don't understand what they're looking at, and someone gets their fucking arm broke or something. Now, I do well, know... Me, I would rather my break. referees break... I'd rather my referees stop it too soon than too late every day of the week. Especially on yeah. the amateur level. Pro level is a little different, yeah. but on the amateur level, for sure. Was that James in there? I think my, <clears throat> two points I want to make real quick. One, as far as the referees go, I don't think you should be a referee if you haven't trained. Period, because you don't know what the fuck you're looking at. Bye. I agree. Sir. So all that bullshit, you, should have, you have to have some kind of uh, legitimate background training with a legitimate jiu-jitsu uh, wrestling. I mean, a lot of different situations, you, you know, you think a guy's got an arm bar. I mean, we, we know the situations that we don't need to expand on that. The second thing, Butcher, you said that you think that guys are doing a good job turning guys over to passing the torch to, hey, you, you can throw this guy's career. Most of those guys, again, to touch on this point, they shouldn't be teaching in the first place, and they're fucking those guys up, teaching them bad habits. If you want to do fucking the guy a favor, don't fucking coach. Period. That's it. Send him, send, if you see a guy who's got some talent, an athlete, send him to a legitimate gym to begin with, instead of being fucking an egomaniac, to an extent, because you are passing the torch. But I think what, what just... James means is it's easier to teach somebody brand new than unlearn something from somebody. You, yeah. It's yeah. very hard to t- get somebody to unlearn a bad habit versus, hey, he's, he, this guy's from scratch. I got a lot to work with from here. His mind is open. You know what I mean? We touched on that earlier, Joe. We went over that. I, w- I went on a fucking tirade from hell going off on, on – coaches for that, that, that yeah, particular thing. I got so. in late, bro. When I got in, you guys were already screaming and yelling about everybody. So, <laughs> No, yeah, we did yeah. touch on that. I, I was going to say that, too, but I didn't want to be disrespectful. Thanks for bringing that in, too, James. And, again, we have 10 minutes left in here. I uh, wanted to, again, make a uh, reference to uh, Nutsack Foods. Make sure you hit up buynutsacks.com and grab a threesome. They have these uh, the three best-selling nut sacks on sale for one price. And, uh, Hook that shit up and put them in your mouth. Also, Paul Mr. Wonderful Orndorff kicked in tonight on this episode, along with our usual every every victorian at PrinoDiet.com. We uh, do appreciate everybody that helps keep us on the air here on ACS Live. Wow. So with that yeah. being said, I want to say we covered a lot of great ground, and uh, I'd like to go around the, with everybody, including you, Joe, I want to thank you for listening and calling in. A long-time listener always helps me out when he's throwing a card, lets me know ahead of time who to get the interviews with, and really helps uh, give us great stuff to talk about. I use uh, James and I interviewed a lot of guys last week. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we're good luck time because I think they all won. So make sure you keep throwing them our way, and we'll uh, enjoy doing that. But uh, I want to give a final thought from everybody and, and really enjoyed this conversation, and I can't wait to break this down and put it out. We'll have it on YouTube and on the mobile app and uh, break break down into different pieces to uh, make sure that 
you know, people understand this information. This is important. And we don't have history books people can just go to the library and pick up. You have to go find this shit out. And guess what? A lot of people don't really fucking know, and they're going to tell you they think they know, and you're still going to have to figure it out on your own. It's not easy, but life ain't fucking easy, so get over it. Uh, final thought, Don Richard. All right. Well, I just want to say, you know, just if any guys are fight, you know, all the fighters out there, you know, if you guys want to learn and you want to learn the right way and you want to be a part of a team that, that, that cares about you and is going to look out for you and put the right resources in your path to help you be successful, give me a call. You know, especially MMA fighters, you know, if you're on the east side and you're looking to get your kids in the uh, into martial arts, come see me. You know, I'm going to take care of them and teach them the right way and keep them out of trouble. And if you're just a hobbyist and you just want to do jiu-jitsu and learn self-defense, Come see me if you want to learn to, you know, make it to the IBJJF world. Come see me. You're not going to get any better training anywhere else. Um, we're going to take care of you. We're going to get you where you want to go. We're going to help you meet your goals. And we're going to provide a, a, a clean, friendly environment for you to learn in. And, you know, the first step is walking through those doors. So come see me. FuseMartialArts.com. Thank you. And James. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say, hey, listen, I, you know, I know it was kind of a, you know, full out NHB, if will, uh, type of conversation, but uh, it was it's yeah. been pent it's been pent up years of frustration and not wanting to have the uh, mentality to just roll over and die and let my sport just be desecrated the way that it's been and is, is being done right now currently as we speak, and I'm going to stand up and say something about it and. And actually, I'm doing it for the fighters' benefits to help them out because it's kind of the blind leading the blind. So it's not just to talk shit and beat up my chest and, and act like an asshole. It's to benefit Michigan MMA. That's it. And I believe that. I've watched you work for years, and Don as well. I've been around Joe. It, the love that you have for what happens and, and what you do is evident. And should be obvious to everyone. And shame on any of the motherfuckers trying to cheat y'all and not pay. Joe, final thought tonight. I, you know, basically the same thing these guys, you know, said. You know, for me, I've been doing martial arts for 25 years. You know, since I was 18 years old, I have a couple of black belts and working on my black belt now in jujitsu. And you know, there's always credit to give, you know, to somebody. I wouldn't even have gotten jujitsu if it wasn't for Don. You know, he saw me at, I can't even remember where it was, one of the fights. He's like, hey, why don't you just come work with me? And I took him up on it. And I'm like, all right. And then I haven't looked back since. He's been, you know, my head jiu-jitsu coach. I, I train a lot at Warrior Way with Brandon, you know, because it's closer. And I teach at Warrior Way. And then after football season's over, I'll be, you know, my son's in football. So after football, when I'm able to free up, I'll be teaching at Fuse every other Wednesday because Don works nights. So I just love being around all the guys. And James, just like Don, whenever I have any questions on anything, even to do with the promotion, because I don't consider myself a promoter. I consider myself a martial artist that just has shows. But, you know, James and, and Don, have John's fought in Russia, James in Japan. You know, these guys have seen some things in the promotion end that I haven't. So any opinion they have that can help me make my show better, they know me well enough, they don't hesitate to tell me. You know what I mean? Hey, why don't we do this? This sound, you know, it's like it's their promotion too. You know what I mean? Let's do this because they'll never hear me say fuck that. I ain't doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's always like that's a good idea, and the only time I won't do it is if we, if the promotion just simply can't afford it, which is a lot of the times the case. You know what I mean? <laughs> we would, we would well, love to have all the bells and whistles, but sometimes we can't do it. You know? Just a shout out to well, Joe. I, uh, I do want, I do want to give a quick shout out to Joe publicly. Um, I had a fighter that I've been trying to get a fight for in America, and this has fallen on deaf ears, uh, Adric Cruz. Um, the fight really didn't make sense for Joe to add it, but, you know, uh, he put it on the show anyway and, you know, um, made it happen. And it also, you know, it helped him a little bit, having some more international fighters, drawing more of an international uh, brand, not just being a local promotion for guys from Michigan to get a chance to fight guys from Canada. And I mean, that's a bordering country, uh, bringing a guy in from you know the Caribbean all the way up to into fight and also to lose money on it, 
you know, that was that was big on his part to look out and and Joe giving back to Michigan MMA saying, hey, look, I'm trying to bring fighters from all over the place to get different looks and expose different things for these guys. So it's, hats off to Joe. Appreciate that too again, man. You know, for no, I, 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 I appreciate you. What an experience What's for that? his competitor that, you know, what a good experience for a competitor that'll come back. You know, and it was a great it. fight. It was a back and forth Perfect. fight. It could have went really either way. And, and, you know, Audric finished strong. It was a, it was a, I mean, all the fights were really good. There really wasn't any, I mean, I didn't see any of him yet. So it's hard for me to comment, but you know, it sounded like they were all good. So the only fight I saw was Adrian's and that was because I was cornering and it was a, you know, I wanted to bring that up too. I think that the continuity we had in the corner was really good. It was, you know, Don, James, me, and Ben. And I went in, in the cage three or four times, but the time that I didn't go in the cage was because it looked like the fight was going to be a ground fight in that round. So I said, Don, you know, go in, please. This is your area. There's no ego. We want our guys to win. We ha- it, The reason why I went in the other times is because Adrian and I have very similar styles of striking. So I know what he can do and can't do. So that's why I went in there. But when it looked like the whole – scope of the fight was going to change it was either going to be James or Don to go in there and so you know Don uh, trains with uh, Adrian quite a bit so he went in there it's just again it's no egos we want our guys to win you know what I mean that's all that matters no matter who's going to do it you know what I mean because Adrian spends quite a bit of time with James too so it's like he's doing the right things so we as coaches can't have an ego we got to do the right thing you know absolutely I'll tell you what I got one minute left absolutely I got one minute left, gentlemen. And first off, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time out to spend three hours tonight doing what's right for everybody that wants to hear it. Second of all, my final thought is <laughs> here are the four of us, all born in the 70s. We don't feel the age that all of us are. We get to do something that makes us feel young. You guys do it physically. I do it through my voice and, and, and just how I feel every day, you know, as a a person. And I really, really appreciate it. And and this conversation has made me realize that there's a lot of people out there that just don't seem to care enough. And I need to try to help bring this message to them as much as I can. So uh, I guess I'm going to be knocking on doors, fellas, and I do appreciate it. Everybody that uh, brings this show online, I'll be back tomorrow night with Steve LaFrate at 10.30 talking about politics, and I'm going to give him some hell about Nick Diaz as well because he's a hater. And uh, I want to thank you guys, man. I appreciate it. James, we'll be back on next uh, Monday and Tuesday talking to fighters, and who knows who we'll have. Uh, Thank you very much, Don Richard and Joe Battaglia as well, and all our listeners. Have a great night. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, guys. You too, buddy. All right. Thank you.